Ford, one of the world's largest automakers, has been experiencing difficulties in India, the world's second most populous country. The business has struggled to gain a fair part of the market since establishing operations in the country, and its decision to close its plants should come as no surprise. The company has taken this decision only after exhausting all other possibilities, including contract manufacturing with other automakers, platform sharing, and potential collaborations, and failing to find a sustainable road to long-term profitability in the country. In today's video, we'll talk about Ford's decision to get out of the Indian automobile industry. Stay tuned! Welcome back to New Vehicle Media, your go-to channel for EV stock. A quick reminder that subscribing is free and liking the video helps YouTube suggest similar content. Comments are loved and featured in our future videos. Ford Motor Company, one of the first multinational automakers to join the Indian market following the liberalization that began in 1991, has planned to close its manufacturing facilities in the country. Approximately 4,000 employees would be affected by the phased closure of the business's two manufacturing facilities in Sanand, Gujarat and Chennai, Tamil Nadu, according to the American manufacturer. The company has accumulated losses of more than $2 billion over the last 10 years. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's efforts to encourage foreign enterprises to manufacture in India have taken another hit as a result of Ford's withdrawal statement. After five years of operations in the world's fourth largest automobile market, Ford has joined a growing list of international vehicle manufacturers that have pulled out of the Indian market. Ford's American rival General Motors and the American motorcycle manufacturer Harley-Davidson are both represented on the list of companies that have left the Indian market. Ford's statement comes just months after talks to transfer its operations to Mahindra and Mahindra, a local competitor. Ford in India was also rumored to be in talks with mobility tech company Ola about the latter's plans to manufacture electric scooters but that did not work out either, and Ola opted to go in alone and build its own Gigafactory. The two plants in India owned by the Dearborn, Michigan-based car manufacturer have a combined yearly production capacity of 400,000 units, but they have been functioning at only 20% of that capacity, with half of that output being exported. During the month of August 2021, Ford had a 1.4% market share in India. The market is dominated by Maruti Suzuki of Japan and Hyundai Motor of South Korea, which together hold a combined 60% market share. Ford India has stated that it will continue to sell CBU completely built-up unit vehicles in the country. Additionally, the business plans to substantially grow its 11,000-employee business solutions team in India in the coming years to assist Ford globally. According to Jim Farley, president and CEO of Ford Motor Company, quote, as part of their Ford Plus plan, they are taking difficult but necessary decisions to produce a sustainably successful business longer term and to allocate their capital in order to expand and generate value in the right places." End quote. Despite making large investments in India, Ford has incurred more than $2 billion in operating losses over the previous 10 years of operations, and demand for new vehicles has been significantly weaker than anticipated. Prior to Ford, General Motors GM, closed its production site in Halol, Gujarat in 2017 and sold its Telegalon Maharashtra facility to China-based Great Wall Motors. Following that, General Motors halted sales in India because of growing losses and near-negligible sales. Harley-Davidson said in September of last year in 2020 that it would close its manufacturing facility in Bawal, Haryana, as well as quote-unquote substantially reduce the scale of its sales operations in Gurugaon. Ford has announced it will stop manufacturing automobiles for sale in India effective immediately. By October-December 2021, the Sanand Vehicle Assembly facility will cease export manufacturing, and by April-December 2022, the Chennai engine and vehicle production plants would cease export manufacturing as well. Additionally, Ford's Indian operations will be supported by more than 500 employees at the Sanand engine plant, which manufactures engines for export for the best-selling Ranger pickup truck as well as approximately 100 employees in parts distribution and customer service who will continue to work for the company. During the Society of Indian Automobile Manufacturers SIAM, annual convention, which took place last month in August 2021, top executives from vehicle manufacturers expressed their concern about excessive taxation 
and rising gasoline prices. Over the last 18 months, the automobile industry has had a significantly slower rate of growth. However, local analysts say that they have not seen any tangible action that would help to reverse the downfall of the automobile sector despite so many statements about its importance. They believe that the automobile industry would not recover, whether through internal combustion engines, compressed natural gas, biofuels, or electric vehicles, unless the issue of affordability of automobiles for consumers is solved. India is a very economical country to begin with. The basic mode of transportation for the country is being taxed at 28% GST, which is the same rate as that of luxury goods. This shows that the automobile industry is not being properly recognized for its contributions to job creation, revenue generation, and the earning of foreign exchange in the Indian market. Ford stated it would commence importing and selling some of its premium and electrified vehicles in India, but sales of its current products such as the Figo, Aspire, Freestyle, Echo Sport, and Endeavor would be discontinued once existing dealer inventories are depleted. The company intends to collaborate closely with employees and labor unions in Chennai, as well as suppliers, dealers, the government, and other stakeholders in order to create a fair and balanced plan to offset the effects of the decision. During the next few years, the company plans to grow its 11,000 employee business solutions team in India, which includes software developers, data scientists, R&D engineers, and finance and accounting specialists. Around the world, Ford has developed an electric car strategy with plans to invest $22 billion through 2025, and it is converting its existing products, such as the Mustang, F-150, and Transit into electric vehicles. Several of its hybrid and completely electric vehicles, including the Mustang Mach-E, will be made available in India, according to the automaker. Ford's electric vehicle strategy, on the other hand, for now, is primarily centered on North America and Europe. In Europe, Ford is collaborating with automobile manufacturers such as Volkswagen, particularly in countries where they don't have a significant presence. While India's auto market has been considered as difficult to get into for the American multinational auto manufacturer, Hyundai affiliate Kia Motors and Chinese automaker MG Motor are among the exceptions, having made major breakthroughs over the last couple of years in the country. The Conclusion Prior to the coronavirus epidemic, automobile sales in India were experiencing a fall, resulting in the loss of at least half a million jobs. In the past, experts have predicted that it could take as long as four years for sales to reach levels observed before the crisis. The Indian market, which once promised significant growth, is now increasingly dominated by Asian rivals, such as Suzuki Motor and Hyundai Motor, which have managed to develop low-cost vehicles that are more appropriate for the country's price-sensitive market. Elon Musk, the millionaire founder of Tesla, has stated that import duties would make his company's vehicles unaffordable in the country of India. Market India must always come before factory India, and this is something that the politicians and bureaucrats fail to recognize or comprehend. India requires a product to be in high demand before inviting businesses to set up shop, but at the first sign of a product doing well, they smack it with an ever-increasing tax rate. This was the reason why Toyota backed out of India and other major manufacturers are also feeling the heat now. What are your thoughts on the matter? Is the Indian market far too sensitive to pricing changes? Is it possible that government tariffs are making it difficult for manufacturers to operate in India? Let us know in the comments section. Mr. Anonymous feels that in order for Lucid to silence their critics, they must first and foremost deliver their vehicle. That should wrap things up for today. Keep in mind that subscribing is still free and liking helps YouTube recognize your preferences. Thanks for taking the time to watch, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.